Can you live for a thousand years? This guy says yes. He says he can extend your life by cryopreserving your entire body. But how is this possible? Won't doing this kill you? And what happens if the power goes out? So you're telling me that 182 dead people are frozen inside these things? Technically speaking, they're not actually dead. They're not really alive or dead. They're kind of a long-term coma with no metabolism. That's crazy. In the hot desert of Arizona lies a cold place from the future. We can use your DNA to regrow a body around you in the future. A place where if you have enough money, you can live for centuries or longer. Meet Max. Hi, I'm Max. With this technology, you can live for as long as you choose. So how does all this work exactly? Well, people today die of all kinds of diseases that we believe in the future will be easily curable with much more advanced technology. So rather than just letting yourself go, today people go to all kinds of extremes to get a few more days or weeks of life. What if you could buy yourself as much time as you wanted? We can fix aging itself probably and cancer and heart disease and anything else that kills you today. So the basic idea is that you're giving more life, more chance at living and in a healthy, youthful body. What if you could buy yourself as much time as you wanted? As much time as you wanted. This place seems like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. At the Alcor facility, you'll find surgical tools, tons of liquid nitrogen, and even bulletproof glass to protect patients in hibernation. That's because everything must be kept clean and sterile to prevent bacteria. So why all this? Why should someone at home cryopreserve their bodies for what seems like an eternity? Well, my question in reply is, why wouldn't you? If you get up in the morning and think, I'm glad I woke up this morning rather than died, why wouldn't you want more of that? There's gonna be a world with much more advanced technology, more wealth, uh, everything generally improves over time, so why would you not want to come back and keep living your life? You may just preserve your brain, for instance, and then regrow a body around the brain, and then you come back to life and continue on as you were, but in a new, healthy, de-aged body. That seems like a pretty good option to me. Hold on, so you're saying I can cryopreserve just my head? Yes, about half our members choose just to preserve the head, including myself. The idea being that this is where you live, up in your brain is where your memories and personality are. Everything else is replaceable. The only thing you can't replace is the brain, because that's you. If you've chosen just to preserve your brain, we'll take the skull and the brain, put it upside down in the ring here, and using these blood vessels, we're going to remove all the water and blood in the brain and replace it with our cryoprotection solution. If you've done a good job in replacing the blood with our medical grade antifreeze, you should end up with something like this. This is a brain that's been very well cryoprotected. There's no ice formation in the brain. That's in good shape. All the neurons are intact. How do we know this is possible? Well, I think we know it's possible because we actually have direct evidence that done well, we are preserving the structure of the brain where your personality and memory resides. We have CT scans, we have electron microscope scans that look right at the neurons that are cryopreserved, and they look beautiful, they look intact. So we think the person is still there. So do you get preserved before you die or after you die? Well, given the laws as today, we have to wait until legal death has been declared, which basically means a doctor has said, throws up the hands and says, I don't know what else to do for this person, I'm giving up. They can maybe resuscitate them, but they're just going to be miserable. How long can you stay? Preserve. There isn't much of a limit. After a hundred years or a thousand years even, you're about as fresh as after one day. Let's put that into perspective. If you were frozen for 100 years and brought back to life, instead of vacationing here, you might be vacationing here. Essentially, you'd be the first real-time time traveler. But how exactly does this all work? Let's find out. First, they begin to cool the patient to protect the cells. Then, they remove all the blood out of your body. Then, they replace it with medical-grade antifreeze to prevent the cells from freezing. Then, they place your body in one of these massive metal tanks. Then, they pump liquid nitrogen inside, which brings the temperature to minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit to keep the body cool. With this technology, you can stop the body's functions completely for as many decades as it takes and go into a much more advanced technology of the future where we can regenerate your body. You may just preserve your brain, for instance, and then regrow a body around the brain, and then you come back to life and continue on as you were, but in a new, healthy, de-aged body. You might be wondering how much all this costs. It turns out it's not very cheap, but can you really put a price on your life? It turns out you can. It costs about $200,000 for your entire body, or just $80,000 for your head. They even take Bitcoin. In fact, we have one of the pioneers of cryptocurrencies here, Hal Finney, the very first person ever to receive a Bitcoin, and some people even think he created them. How long is it going to be before people can be brought back? The honest answer is, I really don't know. It's like asking someone in 1900, when can we put someone on the moon? The answer is, it's going to be several decades at least, it might be a century or more. It's very hard to give an exact prediction. So what happens if the power goes out? Absolutely nothing. These are not powered by electricity, they're basically large 
gigantic expensive thermos flask which have a vacuum layer so you can touch the outside inside is extremely cold but no power is needed just liquid nitrogen boils off at minus 196 degrees c what would need to happen for the worst thing to happen well we're here in arizona because we don't have earthquakes or hurricanes or typhoons really the worst thing that will happen is a legal attack by hostile relatives or a government agency that's the thing that we have to defend ourselves against and have in the past what about the youngest my youngest patient is not quite three years old. We actually have a picture of her over here. She was a little girl from Thailand with brain cancer. We cryopreserved her. It was quite a famous case. There was a Netflix documentary on this. Do you think it's kind of creepy to cryopreserve your body for such a long period of time? Well, compared to what? Compared to being put in the ground to be eaten by worms and bacteria or being shoved into a dry oven to be incinerated? I don't think so. I think this is a pretty good option. talk to anyone who's actually going through the process. Certainly, I'm going through this process. I've been signed up for almost 35 years now. And in fact, I met my wife at a Cryonics Life Extension event and she's been signed up for almost as long. What made you sign up? Cryonics seemed like a feasible solution to the ultimate death of being buried in the ground or cremated. And while I understood at the time that it's a science and a technology that hasn't been fully proven as far as humans uh, bringing back humans are concerned, there have been animals that have been brought back from Quranics. I was very aware of that and it made sense to me. And I understand you guys had a, a pet? Yes. Who, who is this? So. Oscar, our beloved uh, um, golden doodle Oscar. I have a picture of him, I'll show you. It's right here. This is Oscar. Mm -hmm. He lived to almost 15 years old. He went into chronics in 2018. He developed valley fever. There have been animals that have been brought back from chronics. I was very aware of that and it made sense to me. So what about chronics interests you? What interests me the most about chronics is uh, the brain and long-term memory as well as short-term memory and testing to see whether a person who is suspended retains memory after being brought back. And in my scientific research, I proved that memory, long-term memory, is preserved in the simple animal, the C. elegans, and that was a scientific breakthrough, and I think it has a lot of significance. But at what point is this? Is this playing God? We're playing God all the time. Every time we rescue someone from a fire, we're playing God. Every time we fight a natural disaster, a tsunami, an earthquake, we're playing God. So the idea of playing God simply means playing with Mother Nature. But if we don't play with Mother Nature, if we don't intervene with Mother Nature, then there would be catastrophes, un unworldly and ungodly for most people. For most people, cryopreserving your body sounds weird. For others, it's an exciting opportunity to be able to stay here just a little bit longer. The future is here, and it's nice to have an option. But the real question is, would you cryopreserve your body?